is the first calculus question of paper one, question seven. First one is a standard first principles thing where you have used first principles to find the derivative of f of x equals minus 4x squared. Now, I like to first figure out f of x plus h minus f of x, which means you take x plus h and put it in instead of x for x squared. So you get minus 4 times x plus h squared minus f of x, which is minus 4x squared. Well, x plus h times x plus h is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now here, look at this, minus 4 times x squared plus 4x squared, that cancels. But minus 4 times 2 is minus 8x, minus 4 times h squared is minus 4x squared. Okay, well now you can write down the formula if you like. Write down the formula and now instead of, and you write down the derivative, f prime of x equals, the limit as h approaches 0, but instead of f of x plus h minus f of x, write in this minus 8x h minus 4h squared. Now look at that, the h's cancel. The h's, the h's are going to cancel here, you'll get minus 8x. Here, h squared divided by h, you get minus 4h. And now we're just about looking at our answer. This is really a rate of change here, change in y over change of x. But we've just done algebra and, and expressed it in a different way. But now if we let h become infinitely close to 0, the derivative, the gradient, will become infinitely close to minus 8x. This will just approach nothing. And there's our final answer, minus 8x. The next question is super easy because all you do is do the derivative rule that we've learned. 3 times 2 is 6 and bring it down 1 to x squared. 1 times minus 3 is minus 3 and it drops to x to the 0. So just 1 there, minus 3 is the answer. Now this one, it's not in the right form. You have to put it in exponential form, not third form. So it's cube, the root goes in the bottom, so it's 2 over 3. I'll just go 7 times 2 over 3, it's 14 over 3, goes in front. Subtract 1 from 2 thirds, you get minus a third. There it is, your answer. We have to just do the derivative of this last part. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. Subtract 1 from minus 5, you get minus 6. The next question's a little bit harder, um, but not so hard, really, because it says find all the values for x for this function to have a positive gradient. So all you do, well, to look at gradients, you need to look at the derivative. So do the derivative. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6 as x squared. 1 times 8 here is just 8. There's the derivative. This function will um, have positive gr gradients when the derivative is greater than 0. So we just go minus 6x squared plus 8 is greater than 0. We subtract 8 from both sides of the inequality. We divide by negative 6 and change the direction of this um, sign. So this whole thing's going to work when x squared is less than 4 thirds. If we take the square root, we're going to get the answer. The square root of 4 thirds is about 1.15. And as long as x is less than 1.15 or greater than negative 1.15, it'll have a positive gradient. Now, I cheated and used GeoAlgebra so I could look at it just to make sure everything was right here. And look, I typed in this function. It made the thing. And look where it's a positive gradient. Where is it increasing going uphill? In between the two turning points, which are at minus 1.15 and positive 1.15 right in between there so it worked you couldn't uh, you didn't have a computer so you could check and make sure you did it right but this is the answer